During the coronavirus pandemic, images of crowded venues are usually circulated for one of two reasons. Either as a wishful memory or to document excessive parties. No social distancing, no masks, potential super spreader events, as health professionals call them. Today, I'm going to attend an event that belongs in neither category. I'm on my way to Leipzig, a city in eastern Germany, where researchers have invited thousands of people to a concert hall in the name of science. Their goal? To solve a question leaders around the world are grappling with. I'm Rick Nowak and I'm a foreign affairs reporter with the Washington Post. Since the novel coronavirus reached Europe, I've reported from a Polish campaign rally where the presidential candidate shook hands even as cases there were rising. At a German primary school, I witnessed teachers doing everything they can to keep their students safe. All of those efforts, though, very much looked like trial and error. But that's not very much of a surprise, given how many things we still don't understand about the coronavirus. Today, I'm invited to observe the world's perhaps biggest attempt so far to understand what exactly happens when a large crowd of people meets in the middle of a pandemic. And surprisingly, what we're going to witness today is being co-organized by one of Germany's university hospitals. Officials dare say the potential benefits outweigh the risks. To keep participants safe, in advance, everyone attending the concert had to test negative for the coronavirus, including me. On the day of the experiment, around 1,400 participants arrive on site early in the morning. That's less than half of what the organizers had hoped for. But they tell me that they're still going ahead. They will use computer technology to artificially multiply the crowd size later on. Participants have been asked to leave their cars miles away and take a tram to the concert hall. Both the trams and the concert hall are equipped with sensors. Each participant is wearing a tracking device that will allow researchers to later compute how much each of them were exposed to other participants. Researchers will also use ultraviolet light and disinfectant with fluorescent substances to expose the surfaces being touched most frequently by participants. At the concert hall, it quickly starts to get really crowded. It's really quite strange. It does look a lot like a pre-pandemic event. People there are queuing for German sausages, getting coffee. Um, but what reminds you that this is a pandemic is, of course, that a lot of people here are wearing masks and there's staff walking around reminding everyone to put them on. Participants have different expectations. Are you nervous about the experiment? I mean, being so close to so many people again for like a full day yeah. in one big room? Yeah. For me, I'm not. You? A bit. Uh, because <laughs> I need to work to, uh, for Monday, so... We're not scared. Okay. Okay. I think the health system in Germany is good enough, so if we're gonna get it, so yeah. we're gonna get it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not nervous, but my sister, she always said, oh no, you're coming back with Corona at ho to home. But no, I'm not, because everyone took a test two days before, so I think it will be safe. It's a new experience. Nobody knows how, how it's going to work and how close we're going to get with each other and um, what are the consequences. Um, but I think it's a good thing to test it out. Equipped with their tracking devices, the crowds start rushing indoors. They will all go through three different scenarios. In the first one, they pretend as if COVID-19 never happened. No social distancing required. It's a strange feeling. To explain to participants why this kind of experiment is so important, organizers use a fog machine to simulate the spread of aerosols inside the arena. Watching the fog spreading across the arena seems to be unsettling to many who are sitting in the middle of it. I would prefer more open air, actually. Right now, it was weird with the masks. And if I wouldn't know that everyone took a corona test, I would have been very scared because everyone was so close together. In the second scenario, social distancing measures limit exposure. Like. 
now some people feel safe enough to get up from their chairs, even though that's actually prohibited. The main problem is the mask and um, breathing through the mask. And in a concert you want to sing and you, you want to move. Um, and that's not going to happen. Also with a mask you, you, are, you can't sing properly. Yeah. So um, it's not that easy as it seems. It's like a sport. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and your mask broke. Uh, <laughs> yes, like? it's, it's broke. <laughs> okay. uh, huh. But you're going to get, get a new, a new one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And in the third scenario, participants are spread out across the arena, allowing an extreme version of social distancing. It was still good atmosphere actually and you could just stand up and dance and don't uh, go too close to another person so uh, that was actually quite nice so I like that. It, it was not too weird. I thought it's weird but it wasn't. The scenarios mirror on a grand scale what many organizers of smaller events or owners of restaurants and cafes have already done in recent months making space and keeping people socially distanced. Not just as a scientist, but also as someone, you know, who probably enjoys going to events yourself. I mean, what do you hope this can achieve? I hope that this study will help to keep the joy of life up around the world. You need sort of these events so that uh, life is uh, worthwhile living. We can help uh, to restore sports event cultural events and that's what we need. When I discussed the issue uh, last week with uh, some colleagues, a few from South Korea, and then I told them, well, we are doing this sort of experiments. I think they thought we are crazy, that we dare to do such an experiment, but I think it's necessary. The Leipzig researchers say other scientists from around the world have also inquired about how to do similar studies in their own countries. Artist Tim Bensko, the singer who performed in the Leipzig Concert Hall, said any new insights that could help restart concerts would be welcome. Ich glaube, dass äh, mir und auch eigentlich wahrscheinlich der gesamten Veranstaltungsbranche fast alles recht ist, was uns irgendwie ein Stück der Normalität näher bringt. Ähm, und ich glaube, dass da alle gefordert sind, wir auf der Bühne und ähm, auch die Zuschauer, dass wir alle so ein bisschen Abstriche machen müssen. Es wird wahrscheinlich noch eine Weile dauern, bis wir uns genauso fühlen, wie wir das letztes Jahr noch gemacht haben. Ähm, Hauptsache, wir kommen wieder zusammen und es ist ähm, und für uns als Band war das jetzt tatsächlich überraschend schön. Ähm, überraschend, weil wir davon ausgegangen sind, dass es sich alles ein bisschen steriler anfühlen wird. In the coming weeks, the results of the tests will be analyzed and compiled for a report that's due to be published in October. But the longer the pandemic lasts, the more companies and countries are running out of patience and are taking new risks, giving the Leipzig experiment more urgency. These are